Hello, everybody. Welcome again to one question a day. The chapter we are discussing is development of teeth, and the question for today is Hertwig's epithelial root sheath. Here we discuss about the formation, about whom after it's named after, the general features of Hertwig's epithelial root sheath, description with diagram, function, role in root formation in both in single and multi-rooted tooth. With diagrams, the fate of hers, diagrams, and we talk about the cell rest of malaises and the clinical considerations. For this, you need to talk about in detail about hers. It was discovered by Oscar Hertwigs in amphibians and later identified in mammalians and all uh, uh, living organisms that have the tooth as we know it today. The root forming begins once the enamel and dentine reaches its future cemento enamel junction or rather to be very precise when the crown formation gets over. And at this point, the stellate reticulum and the stratum intermedium collapses because all the nutrition is exhausted. And as the inner enamel epithelium and the outer enamel epithelium comes together, they form along the future cervical area a structure called as reduced enamel epithelium that is also known as cervical loop. Okay, this is the cervical loop. This is this starts to proliferate downwards with a small bend that is called as the Hertwig's epithelial root sheath or the epithelial diagram, diaphragm, when there is a constriction beginning. This is associated with the integration or the induction of the root dentinogenesis from the newly formed odontoblast. The cervical loop forms as it grows towards the diaphragm, the cervical diaphragm, as it moves towards each other, it starts to elongate like this. The plane of diagrams and future, at the end, it forms the epical foramen. Okay, the dental sac surrounds the entire structure and when this elongated HERS ruptures or undergoes apoptosis, they rupture and expose the newly formed dentin to the surrounding dental sac. And the outer layer of the dental sac differentiates to form cementoblast that lays down the cementum. So, the cemento enamel junction bend or the epithelial diagram or the horizontal plane forms a single loop. If for a single root or bifurcates or trifurcates, depending upon the number of roots. The cells here may survive in adulthood and found in the periodontal ligament is called the cell rates of malaises and named after Louis Charles Malaises, who first reported this entity. After radicular dentin formation, the HERS loses its continuity and remnants contributes to the formation of cell rest analysis and lies in the periodontal ligaments. Clinical significance. For this question, we have to talk about cementicles which are calcified bodies present in the periodontal membranes can be incorporated with along with cementum or alveolar bone or even bone marrow spaces. Okay. The other clinical significance of our Hertwig sheath is super association with supernumerary root and dilaceration. These are the clinical, uh, clinical signification, significance of this Hertwig's uh, epithelial root sheath. You start from where it starts, the cells that contribute to the formation of HERS, the fate, the plane, how it integrates or plays a role in the formation of root, multi-rooted tooth, and how it persists in adulthood as cell rest of malaises, how it could contribute to pathologies and symmetricals. With that, we come to the end of the discussion on the cell rests of, sorry, epithelial herpes of malaises and stay connected with this channel for more questions. <laughs>